can see that when moringa trees get to a certain height, it becomes entirely unfeasible to harvest the leaves. You always want to make sure you cut at an angle so that there's no rainwater pooling on the cut which can cause stem rot. Of course uh, propagating always means harvesting as well so we're going to take off all the leaves we can get <coughs> separate those. Initially we've got the flowers as well. You always want to make sure that the bark is gray. Um, you'll find little bumps all over the gray part. That means it's um, old enough to root. Uh, if it's green, the tree's too young and it won't be able to. Um, you won't be able to make cuttings off it or truncheons, as they're called, the large branches like this. Just break off these limbs, any leaves. This will be a truncheon. Diagonal cut at the bottom. Diagonal cut at the top prevents rainwater pooling. Diagonal cut at the bottom allows lots of cambium layer for roots to come out of. So from that tree, we have four uh, truncheons. Now you can either take your truncheons and stick them in pots, or you can just stick them in the ground. where they'll root and become a new tree. You can see new sprouts coming out of truncheons that I made previously. After a couple weeks, shoots will come out of your coppice trees. Can actually harvest. So what I like to do is take the young tips and snap off. Whatever snaps is the tender bit. This also helps the plant to get a lot bushier. Cook up these tips like asparagus, uh, steamed or stir-fried. You can put them in salads. And with the older leaves, you can take them and hang them up someplace dry on a string and let them dehydrate. Once they get brittle, then you can grind them up and make a leaf powder. This is the uh, Moringa leaf powder. You can put it in a little uh, salt shaker or spice shaker. And the flowers, you can just cook up as is, uh, stir-fried or steamed and they're pretty tasty.